Good afternoon and welcome to Deep Lots weekly webinar. I appreciate you taking the time to join us this week as we explore Jacksonville, Florida. My name is Michael Cavone. I am the Chief Revenue Officer of Deep Box. And today I will be navigating you through searching for various parcels for development in Jacksonville, Florida. But before we get started, I'm gonna wait a few minutes just to give some more time to let people join us today. Um, in the meantime, just gonna give you, show you a little bit of our website. Also keep in mind, you can always use the chat below to ask me any questions. And if you have any questions after the webinar ends, please feel free to email me at michael at deepblocks.com. Uh, we can always set up one-on-one -on -one demos to explore the software even further or answer specific questions that may cater to your needs. Um, again, and feel free to always ask questions during the webinar. If there's something you want me to review or go back on, or again, or look into a little bit further, please feel free to use the chat. Yeah, I do thank you for joining us today as we spend some time looking at Jacksonville, Florida and exploring different development opportunities uh, using our software to demonstrate how DeepLox can quickly search through thousands and thousands of parcels, narrow it down to just a handful and really cater to that search and refine your search based on your development criteria. Uh, before again, I begin, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna share my screen and show you some key parts of our website that are very helpful. If you go to deepblocks.com, if you go to the cities tab, you'll, you'll, look, you'll notice all the markets that we are currently in. Uh, the red dots will represent all the markets we have zoning data throughout the country. The blue dots represent all the cities we have parcel level data. And we also have market data throughout the country. So as you may or may not know, DBlox is uh, built to basically converge various data sets from, again, zoning data, parcel level data and market data all into one interface to streamline your development process and really expedite your ability to find parcels, locate parcels. And um, that's the front end of our inner, of our software. That front end interface is our market scanner. Just allows you to search for these parcels in a very expedited fashion. Once you select a parcel, you can then preliminary underwrite that parcel based on multifamily, retail, office, industrial or mixed use. And then our, our back end interface allows you to do a 3D massing and uh, financial analysis. It's a one year back of the envelope return on cost. And again, it's a really great tool, a very efficient tool to, we're seeing our users save about 90% of their time by utilizing our software to again, finding a parcel and then evaluating that parcel and doing the preliminary underwriting and understanding the best scenario and development play for that parcel with that 3D modeling. Again, I'm gonna give a few more minutes and we'll then we get started and jump into the searching of parcels in Jacksonville. Some additional parts on our website that are, are very important. Uh, we have a tutorial section, which allows you to view 60 second clips of key functionalities. Uh, we're constantly adding to this section of our website, uh, very instrumental in understanding the software and truly getting a good grasp on the various functionalities that we offer. We have our webinar section, which allows you to uh, review or watch uh, previous webinars if you, in case you were not able to make it one week or you wanna go back and kind of go over something we may have discussed in uh, during our webinar session. And then lastly, we have our pricing. Currently we're at $18,000 per user per year. Uh, that's a great price at the moment. We're gonna be increasing this price as, the, as months come as we continue to expand scale out we're going to be adding about 57 more cities in the coming months uh, we have about 10 or 15 being released shortly and again i want to say by the beginning of july to the beginning of august we'll be adding another 57 cities our goals have been about 700 to 800 cities by the end of the year with zoning data so we're really in a strong position to continue to expand our presence throughout the country in various markets from primary markets secondary markets and really cover a good portion of the country with zoning data. And as I mentioned, we have parcel level data almost over a thousand plus cities and that market data is throughout the country. All right, so with that being said, we're gonna jump into Deep Blocks and then we're gonna look at the software. Right now you're looking at my dashboard and the front end interface is a search engine, this market scanner, but 
Before I begin the search, as I mentioned, we're today we're looking at Jacksonville, Florida. We're going to, you know, look at various different um, scenarios and search through different criteria to find parcels and different types of development opportunities. But I'd like to mention we're going to actually end up focusing on one particular project. As someone reached out to me and is doing a, a very noble cause. He's setting up a nonprofit program where they're going to be developing grocery stores, health clinics, nurseries, legal and accounting service for disadvantaged uh, communities. And he's looking to start this actually in Jacksonville, Florida, and then has planned to scale it out in various other cities. So we're going to do a little search and try to locate parcels based on his criteria uh, for this particular development project. It's, a, again, a very noble cause and do appreciate and taking the time to put that his effort into helping those that are disadvantaged. And that's a very, again, tremendous uh, capacity and doing great things for the community. So, but before we get into that particular scenario, we're gonna just jump into Jacksonville, Florida and kind of just show some different uh, searches based on uh, various uses allowed and just kind of focus on a few different functionalities, different elements of our software. All right, so currently in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, one thing I like to always recommend and advise is that our users use Google Chrome to uh, use our software. Another recommendation is to always zoom out. I like to zoom out to about 80% for my screen size. This allows you to ca capture as many parcels as possible in your viewport. Uh, the viewport obviously is this, your screen um, in your that you're, you're looking at. So I'm currently on a 24 inch screen. Um, so not only do I zoom out my Google Chrome to 80%, I also like to zoom out the software and you can zoom out as far as possible until you, if you do not see the blue lines any longer, no longer see these parcels that are being uh, represented. That means you zoomed out a little too far and you simply have to zoom back in. And as I mentioned, if you zoom out too far, what will happen is you'll, the search engine capability will no longer function. So you just, again, have to zoom back in until you see those parcels outlined. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more. Okay. Now I have as many parcels as possible fitting in my viewport and just gives me the most uh, capacity to really search and view as many parcels as possible. And again, go from thousands and thousands of parcels. And as I enter specific criteria, we can narrow those parcels down to just a handful very quickly. But before I start using the search, engine the market scanner just quickly going through some of the tool set uh, up here we have our satellite view so you can simply turn this on and you'll get a, a satellite layer will be presented so you can search either in the satellite view or that previous view that i was just displaying i prefer to search in the previous view and i like to turn on the satellite layer when i'm kind of i kind of narrow down my results to just maybe less than 10 properties so and then i can kind of really zoom in and really understand the landscape. So I'm gonna go back to that previous view. Additionally, we have our select parcel tool that just selects one parcel at a time. As you select a parcel, property info will appear. You can also get a Google Street view of that parcel. We have an assemblage tool. This allows you to select multiple parcels at one time. So you can, again, select one, two, three, four, five, as many parcels as you want, and then you can kind of evaluate all those parcels as an assemblage and look at the development from that scenario. We also have a draw parcel tool, a tremendous tool and great functionality. Uh, kind of serves two different purposes. You can draw a parcel pretty much anywhere in the world and still use our software to, if, if we do not, if, we're, if you're in a city, we do not have zoning or do not have parcel level information, you still can use that draw parcel tool, draw the parcel, and then still use our 3D uh, modeling and financial analysis interface, as well as look at some of the map layers and market data to understand that particular parcel. Another use for the draw parcel tools, if you find a larger parcel, you can actually draw parcels within that bigger parcel and kind of evaluate your scenario in that regard. So for instance, if you want to build say 12 units of townhomes, you find a very large plot or parcel, you can draw those 12 different townhomes within that larger parcel. And we just recently added a copy and paste feature. So you could draw now just one parcel, then copy and paste the additional parcels without having to manually draw each and every one. So it's a very, very helpful tool. So next we go into our market scanner, pretty much the driving force behind 
this uh, interface. And what we're gonna first do is we're gonna jump into the lot size. I kind of, what I like to do is when I have my viewport up, I like to activate the lot size. I'm gonna put in 10 million here. Because what this does, it gives me just a good idea of how many parcels generally exist in my particular viewport. And always keep in mind, you can move your screen north, south, east, or west, and your screen will automatically update, and your results will automatically update as you move your screen. Right now we have 6,571 parcels matching just based on me activating lot size from zero to, sorry, yeah, 10, maybe it's 10 million, from zero to 10 million square feet. And uh, we have, again, we have a great tool here. You can export CSV, so you can quickly export all the parcels that are matching into a CSV file. You'll get every legal address for those parcels, along with about 15 additional columns of data tied to those parcels. So the next step we like to do is we start to refine our search. Uh, we're gonna start with looking at some different uses allowed in Jacksonville. So for instance, if we're doing looking for single family dwellings, right, just like that, we're gonna take this off. So right now what you're seeing is 4,100 parcels matching, almost 4,200 parcels matching that are zoned for single family dwellings in this particular part of Jacksonville and in my viewport. Another thing we can search for is, let's see, we can do multiple family dwellings, which is also another way of saying multifamily. So multiple family dwellings, that's how it's worded in the Jacksonville ordinances. So right now we're showing about 930 parcels that are zoned for multiple family dwellings in Jacksonville. So again, quickly, we went from 6,000 parcels overall to down to 930 matching if you're looking to develop a multifamily place. So let's take this one step further. One, another great way of refining your search is looking at the units allowed for multifamily. So we can activate our units allowed right here. And let's say we're looking for at least 20 units allowed and up. And right now we have, let's see, 24 parcels now match. So we, again, we went from 6,000 to just to 24 parcels matching in this particular part of Jacksonville that are zoned for multiple multifamily and allow for at least 20 units. So again, just a good way of quickly identifying these properties. Let's take it one more step further and see if we can find properties with allow 40 units. Let's see what we get. And now we're down to two. So again, like I mentioned, just a matter of minutes, we went from 6,000 parcels to two parcels. And now we can evaluate these parcels and say, all right, maybe this is what I'm, I'm focused in and my needs are in order to develop a multifamily or it's zoned for multifamily and I'm looking for at least 40 units allowed and up. So the next step would be to select these parcels, you know, one or the other and start evaluating this parcel and going into the next interface to kind of develop this particular play and look at the financial analysis to see if this parcel makes sense for you. So again, before I proceed to that part of the uh, demonstration, I select that parcel, and as I mentioned, you get the property info, and you will see demographic information, property info right there, some building information. This is actually vacant land, so that's even better. Uh, we have market value, ownership information, and then we go into that zoning information, which again, Deep Blocks is known for. We bring in the, the most important components of this pre-construction -pre phase of displaying the zoning information for you. So it kind of breaks down that zoning limits, the unit density, parking by use, and use is allowed, and then we get our setbacks. And again, this information will transfer into that back end inf interface as well. Um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier too, we have a street view uh, option, which will just quickly give you a nice display of what is existing on that particular parcel at the moment. And then so this is a way of just confirming to make sure it is vacant land, which it looks like it is. So that is a good way of, again, validating that what we selected is what we're looking for. And another thing that we like to always use after you kind of, and even sometimes before you go into the um, select parcel tool. So let's go back one step. Before I select this parcel, we also like to utilize our map layers as well. So as we're, as we're doing our search and when all the parcels are coming up that are that match, 
we can use our map layers to also understand and identify a marketplace. But before I proceed, we do have a question. Yeah, so the question is, is this information program available throughout the US? Very good question. Uh, yes, it is. It's, so we have right now zoning data uh, in 45 cities. 43 of those 45 are in the United States. We're adding another 57 cities in the United States in the next month or two. We'll be in 700 cities with zoning data by the end of the year. Uh, but in addition to the zoning data, we have parcel level data in over a thousand plus cities in the United States. And then lastly, we have market data, which is representing these map layers uh, that is represented throughout the entire country. So it does not necessarily have to be in the cities that have zoning data or parcel level data. We try to show that market data throughout uh, any market throughout the country. As long as the data is not tied to our zoning data that's being pulled or the parcel data, that market data will be represented pretty much anywhere. So for instance, opportunity zones. We can turn this layer on, that goes throughout the entire country, uh, no matter what market that we currently have zoning or parcel level data. So as you can see with the opportunity zone on, anything in the yellow, if a parcel was matching in this opportunity zone, that would say that it's represented at, in that opportunity zone. Um, we also show zoning density, which is a great layer for understanding pockets of interest and seeing what the, where the density lies. Uh, we have a map legend, which basically will tell you how this data is sourced, how it's represented on our site. So right here on the left side, this middle button, and like I mentioned, we have zoning density is currently turned on. If you scroll down, it'll show you how it's represented. So basically red's high density, orange is medium density, and yellow is low density. So pretty much, actually the building that I selected, this parcel that I selected is high density, and these orange are medium, and the yellow are low density. So just some other key map layers just to show you. So we have our people button, our people layer, which is tied to our census data. So it's 2010 to 2018 at the moment. We're, uh, 2020 was just recently released in its entirety. So we're working to bring all that data in so we can update our software from 2010 through 2020. But some key pieces of information here, we have heat maps right here. And down below, we show some demographic trends. But for, well, from a more macro level, we like to use these heat maps so for instance, let's turn on median income. So to me, census data is median income. And you'll see these different, uh, the median income for these different census tracts. So right now, these two parcels that we have highlighted based on my search engine criteria, we're looking at a median income of 35.2. Uh, if you're looking for a more lower income, maybe some type of affordable housing, you might go into this median income of 12,588. Uh, we could also show median rent, which is also again, based on census data. So then we also have our residential tab. Uh, one of the buttons I'd like to always discuss is the residential rates. This is dollar per square foot. We take an aggregate of MSL, MLS listings throughout the country, and then we apply our machine learning to these uh, listing sites and their values. And we, you know, our machine learning then is applied and we bring a very strong baseline and um, we validate this information relatively frequently. And uh, it, it really, again, gives you a good indicator of what that dollar per square foot leasing rate you can charge in these different census tract areas. And again, we do the same type of information for office rates, retail rates, and industrial. Another good button I like to always show is the retail. Again, we have the retail rates there. We show traffic counts. So you can understand the traffic flow in a particular market. We also show all the local businesses based with these, uh, predicated on these orange dots throughout a market. So again, these are just good ways of understanding the market, identifying the marketplace and seeing if it makes sense to develop there. Uh, so after we kind of go through those map layers, the next step really is to kind of go to a more micro level and really understand particular uh, areas that these parcels are in. So that for that case, I like to use these demographic trends, which are extremely helpful. And you'll see that what I can do now is I can kind of highlight these uh, color boxes and we can then evaluate, look at the trend line. So this particular, those parcels are in the 172 census tract. So I can turn these off and we can study that 172 trend line. Population growth was pretty strong over the last six years, a little bit of a decline in recent years. We can then say, we can look at the employment per population as well. 
median gross strength. Let's check out the median household income. See that trend line? So again, we're looking at 172. Again, you put your mouse over the box, you notice that the shade pops over the screen. You see those two parcels selected, or sorry, highlighted. And then you see the trend line here again, pretty good income growth over the last six years, a little, sorry, last seven years, and a little dip in the last uh, couple of years. And then as you can see, this is compared against the overall United States average. So again, these are just good indicators of understanding that marketplace and area. And really the next step is you would just click this parcel. As I mentioned, you go to the property info, and then our next step would be to do preliminary underwriting. Uh, we'll just do a quick multifamily play. I really want to spend a little more time on uh, searching for the parcels in relationship to the uh, nonprofit program that I mentioned earlier. But just going through our back end interface again, this is where you can do our 3D modeling and financial analysis. In this interface, you basically can adjust the setbacks. You can enter in various assumptions from the income side, the cost side. And again, you can quickly analyze and go through various iterations of a project to see what makes the most sense to get that return, the highest return on cost. Again, it's a one year back of the envelope uh, return on cost. But just to quickly show you how the setback mode works, I'm going to put in, and as I mentioned, the property info from the, the previous interface comes through to this back end interface. You'll see at the very bottom, we do have setbacks. There's a setback of 20 feet, and then it kind of breaks down uh, various setbacks based on different scenarios. Just for this example, I'm going to actually do a relatively large setback to really reduce the amount of, because we, we do not want 100% lock coverage for this. I'm going to make it 100 feet, 100 feet. Then you'll notice the building automatically adjusts. We can then adjust based on certain floors. So we, I'm going to go to the seventh floor. Make this 150 feet. And you start building like a little bit of a tower. And then after you kind of adjust your setbacks, you can go into assumptions and we can adjust these. We can adjust the unit mix. So we can say maybe I'm going to, now we can see what the, the number of units allow. 2,400 is quite a bit because it's a very large property here. But let's say, so you get 20 units per acre. Uh, units allowed 254, so let's just bring this down a bit. And you'll see your building will adjust based on the, uh, the data you enter in. This is probably a great parcel to really use that draw parcel tool and set up various towers um, and just kind of create different, almost like a, a community of sorts. Actually, just to show you an example of that community that you could build something along these lines. So if you had a parcel of that size, it might allow you to really build various different uh, complex and units. So there you go, you could probably, if something like, when the, the acreage is that big, you could definitely create and set up a complex, a complex of sorts. So, and then from there, you could kind of, again, adjust your assumptions. We could look at, you can adjust the gross buildable for each unit that we uh, select. You can adjust the multi multifamily income. We can adjust the vacancy. We can also go into the cost side of it, adjust the purchase price, adjust the hard cost dollar per square foot. A lot of these values are uh, some market values are pre-populated based on the sub market. But again, we leave everything adjustable for you so you can update and look at different scenarios and see what makes the most sense for your particular development play. So just, again, that's a quick glimpse of how to use that backend, this backend interface. One of the last things you can also do is you can export this to a PDF report. It's a four page PDF file that'll present, it's a good way of presenting this uh, particular scenario to, again, colleagues, investors, or partners, whoever it may be. We have another question. Sure, well, uh, I appreciate you jo uh, joining us today, and I will be sure to uh, reach out to you. Thank you. So, again, I want to kind of go back to what I originally was wanted to focus on today is looking for some parcels in Jacksonville, just to give you some piece of criteria that we were discussing. He's looking for parcels in the zip codes of 32208 and 32009 between Kings Road and Moncrief Roads in Jacksonville, um, roughly about eight to 10 acres totals is what he's trying to build upon to build a strip center. So 
we can go about this one of two ways. I'm going to first put in Moncrief Road to begin the process. Let's see, Moncrief. All right, so we'll go to Moncrief Road. That's off. As I mentioned, he's looking for parties between Moncrief and Kings. I have another question. A very good question. So in uh, my previous example, where there are multiple buildings on the one large parcel, are there resulting calculations for the entire development or is the analysis for each building? Very, very good question. The way it's currently set up, it's for it's a, it's built for the entire scenario, entire all the buildings are looked at as one a big project. We don't have it set up yet to do it where it's uh, for each individual building that we build on that larger parcel. It is something we're looking to incorporate down in our roadmap where you can uh, set up the analysis for each one. But right now, again, it's looked at as an overall one big project. But that is a very, very good question. So here we're in Jacksonville again on my, this is Moncrief Road. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. And as Moncrief Road goes south, we're kind of looking in this area. Because Kings Road is a little bit below my screen. Let's see. I believe this is Kings. This is Kings Road right here. So we're kind of looking in this general area for an assemblage of about eight to ten acres total. So. We're gonna turn our lot size on. So first I'm gonna look, we're gonna do it one of two ways. Uh, we're gonna look for anywhere from one to four acres of land. And then we could do an assemblage to get up to eight to 10 acres, or we can then look for larger plots and try to find one or two. But I think it might be easier based on looking at the outlines of these parcels that it might be simpler to do an assemblage. So uh, one, one acre is 43.5. And let's see, four acres is 174,000. 240 square feet. So we get 51 parcels matching between one to four acres. And we kind of start scanning around. Uh, we used to allow, I believe, in the this particular ordinance, I want to say it's commercial for retail. Yeah, I believe it's commercial retail sales and service establish establishment. And we're down to five parcels matching. But before I activate that particular use is allowed, let's just I want to look at these particular parcels see if we can do an assemblage and create a certain scenario where you could do a strip a strip center so right here we have two next to each other so let's we're going to turn on our assemblage tool and we'll select both of these and look kind of look at the property info so now we're looking at 104,837 square feet So that's a little, probably a little too small. We need a little bit more than that. Let's go over here and these off. So we select these two parcels. We're looking at 177,000 square feet. That's a little bit over four, a little over four acres. So still not enough. Let's see, I'm just gonna jump around. Again, I'm trying to just kind of explore this area and see if I can find uh the total square footage now this is actually pretty good right here these two parcels together right along route one it's going to bring you about 391 square feet which is a little over eight acres so that that could possibly work i have another question we want to change the multiple building project let's say remove one building can we do that without starting a new project in the deep block Did the, um, uh, to answer your question, yes and no. So if you draw, so if we have a large parcel and we like in that example, we drew those parcels out to create that complex. So say there's six of those parcels drawn within that large parcel. As long as you do not refresh your screen, you can hit the back button and it'll bring you back to that draw parcels in the front end interface, and you can actually delete one of the parcels. So I'm not gonna go through it in this particular scenario, but if I drew out five parcels within this bigger parcel, or say I did the six parcels within this big parcel, I went to the next interface, did my financial analysis, I did not 
I want to see now is five. I can hit the back button on the screen, go back to this, this interface, and I can delete using this erase, uh, erase tool, delete drawn parcels tool, and then delete one of those parcels, and then you would just have five. So yeah, to answer your question, yes, you could delete one and then go back to the preliminary on the writing, and then now look at the scenario with a five, and then you would have the six and five um, projects saved in your, uh, in your dashboard. The minute you refresh your screen or if you leave, like clear your cookies, then you would actually have to start all over again. But uh, again, and if you have any questions and want to go on a deeper, a deeper dive in regard on the draw parcel tool, please feel free to you know email me or call me and I'll definitely uh, have no problem walking through it with you because it is a great tool and especially now with these copy and paste features and it just allows you a lot of flexibility. But in regards to the search here, as I mentioned, we're up to 391 square feet. Let's see what's we can look at current use, land use. Got a couple of existing buildings on there right now. There's 44 units with 14 buildings on it. So let's just see what use is allowed. Again, they're looking to build a grocery store. I want to say uh, I know it's a nursing uh, nursing or a daycare, as well as um, Accounting and legal services, and again, a tremendous strip center to provide services to the disadvantaged. And it looks like, let's see, they have family daycare. This could be a good uh, little stretch of land for this particular strip center. So, in any case, uh, yes, this is one option. We can continue to explore some more within uh, this particular part of Jacksonville. Oops, zoom a little too far out. I'm gonna go back to my market scanner. So as fast as you select these parcels and kind of go through the property info, you can easily deselect them. And again, start your search over. Again, right now we're, we're looking at a lot size between one and four acres in Jacksonville between uh, Moncrief and Kings Road. Let's see, we have a parcel here, a pretty long, narrow parcel. That's not gonna be enough. Get that off. And like, I, I like to mention too, like as I said in the previous part of the, or the earlier part of my demonstration, we could always turn on these map layers too to understand this uh, marketplace. We are, I know, it's another thing he did mention, he's looking for, parcels within an opportunity zone. So let me kind of see what parcels are matching based on this acreage in the opportunity zones. I'm gonna do one thing. Well, actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase this up to the 10 acres just to see what falls within this criteria. So we're gonna do 435,600 square feet. That's one to 10 acres. And let's see, we have one big parcel right here. 160,000 square feet. So that falls a little bit on the shorter side, but closer to about three acres. And again, this is again, this is the, this is how you use the tool. You know, we are we're giving specific criteria, and it just allows you to go through all these parcels and all these situations in a very, very quick manner. I mean, it's, this is a process that normally takes, it take months, sometimes weeks to scan through all these properties, see what they're zoned for, um, then start doing the analysis, going back and forth between architects and consultants. I mean, the amount of money you sometimes have to put out and the amount of time is tremendous where Dblocks is consolidating all this, streamlining it for you and letting you, and, and then in addition, it allows you to scale out and do this on, in many different markets all at one time. So right now this particular parcel is 286,000 square feet. So again, we're getting a little bit closer. That's almost, that's about seven, roughly seven acres. This could be another good location in, an in the opportunity zone. So again, I'm just trying to go through and look for particular parcels based on his criteria. Uh, and as I mentioned, it just, is, you know, the software, it gives you that capability of doing it relatively fast and much more efficient than previous methods. But um, that being said, you know, it's, if anyone does have any questions or does want to explore anything further, please feel free to reach out to me at michael at deepblocks.com. And I do, again, appreciate your time and joining me today.
Um, next week, I hope you come back and we'll explore more markets throughout the country and show you the various functionalities tied to deep blocks. So with that, have a great afternoon and hope to see you soon. Take care.